Okay, hello, anyone that's watching this. Uh, so we just recently had our biochemistry uh, first quiz, um, which is um, it's called the biochemistry short course. It's over the first couple, of three chapters. Uh, scores were less less than I liked, and so I thought I'd just kind of go over um, strategies for improving on the next quiz, analyzing the first quiz, which will be useful for the exam, et cetera, and taking quizzes in the future. First thing I'll do before I'll go for the quizzes, kind of quickly flip through all the content we covered. Um, you know, I talked about the different elements, um, different macromolecule categories were used. Um, and I asked the quiz students on, uh, this is an important slide here, how to identify which macromolecule you're looking at. Um, I gave examples of all four different macromolecules that we did in activity. And that was the end of, uh, the first class um, for the second week uh, we started covering water chemistry talk about some functional groups uh, give some quiz questions on functional groups uh, we talked about water um, hydrogen bonding characteristics uh, what's an angstrom hydrogen bonding solvents so what's what makes something soluble i gave my description on the hydrophobic effect um, can we determine, looking at a molecule, can we determine if it's soluble or not? Um, talked about weak interactions, Van der Waals contacts, et cetera. All right, and then the next deck of slides, I started getting into pH. Um, talked about some pH, some common solutions. Um, but the focus on here was kind of what makes it, uh, what does pH mean in terms of number of hydrogen ions? I did a derivation of the equilibrium constant. We derived what pH is defined as. We talked about pOH a little bit. Um, here's the formula for calculating pH. Um, I gave an example. This is the type that you could expect to see on the quiz. Um, this one is a little bit more involved. So, uh, and then we talked about you know conjugate acid base pairs. I get into the kind of the naming system here, um, and the different pKa values associated with them. Uh, and their acidity, their tendency to analyze. And then I derived uh, the equation, the Henderson-Hasselbosch equation, a very important one that relates pKa and pH and to tell whether or not something is protonated or not. Uh, really stressed this slide here. If the pH is below the pKa, then it's mostly protonated if the pH is above the pKa. So as the pH goes up, you're going to have less and less hydrogens attached. I think that's it. Important one a lot of students missed. Um, you know, what's the most common species of something? So the pKa is 4.76, it's pH 7, it's going to be deprotonated. Um, gave some calculations. Um, we'll get into that later. And some more problems here, some of you, et cetera. Uh, and then we went and talked about buffers. Let's see here. Um, don't want to go too long here. Uh, talk about weak acids and you know, this is the, the titration curve, right? I think students a lot miss this question. I'll get into it later. But as you can see, as I add base, the pH starts going up quickly, but then it slows down and then it starts going quickly again, right? Um, or reverse with acid, it goes quick and then it slows down and then it goes quick again. Um, a lot of students miss the problem related to that. Uh, we talk again, phosphate buffer, it's got three different pKa's and I ask you uh, what are the two most common species this is an incredibly challenging question uh, I think finding the most common one is easy so we're at pH 7.4 the most common one would be one single proton second most common one would be two so um, you know, just talk about making laboratory buffers a little bit beyond what you expect on a quiz and then finally we cover the amino acid structures so, um, so, you know, I expect students to be able to look at different amino acid structures and interpret them. I was really focused in on being able to identify uh, what is the correct stereosymmetric amino acid. So it's the only one found in natural. So, so again, since this one, the H is into the page, I should go counterclockwise, C-O-R-N. Otherwise, if the H is out of the page, it would be clockwise. Um, and then we talk about different types of amino acids, simple, hydrophobic, and students were required to identify them. I highly recommend it. Uh, 
getting flashcards. Uh, I recommended Anki as a good source, and I gave a couple things because you know while the test is the quiz is open book, you know it, you don't have a lot of time. So uh, this is this kind of extra stuff, and then I gave a whole bunch of examples on. You know this this is probably a key one here, being able to identify the different ones. We spent a little bit of time on that. Um, and you know being able to work with them. So and that was what we covered. Um, going into this quiz. So, so without further ado, let me get to the actual quiz. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and pretend I'm a student here. So it always saves my quiz and I don't have the timer. All right, start the timer, it's 10.08. All right, so I always ask students to write their first names, not appropriate for me. Um, I love having questions where I give you a, some sort of organic molecule and you have to identify what macromolecule category we are. Um, I'm seeing nitrogens, so, and a lot of nitrogens. I'm seeing nitrogens bounded to carboxyls, AKA peptide bonds. Um, this is not something we learned yet, but it was an alpha helix. Um, and it's got some R groups, right? I don't see any rings. These look like hydrogen bonds to me. So there are no rings. So it's not nucleic acid. It's got nitrogens, which makes me think it's a protein. Uh, I'm not seeing long hydrocarbon chains and sugars typically don't have that many nitrogens. So I'll safely say it is a protein. All right, uh, hopefully you know your Nucleic acids, we have rings. We have a five-member ring attached to a six-member ring. It's got nitrogens in the ring. That is what we call a nucleic acid. This is a some sort of base pair thing going on. Based on looking for which of the following confluent pounds is most likely hydrophobic. So anything that contains nitrogens and oxygens, probably not hydrophobic. So we got phosphate, oxygen, oxygen, nitrogen, only carbon and hydrogen. That's our hydrophobic molecule. Molecules readily soluble in water are considered polar. All right, this is one of those challenging questions. Um, so citric acid is triprotic. It has pKa's of 3.13, 4.716, 6.39, and has, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more on these questions. We don't really need the test information either. Um, Protonated form that is most abundant at pH two and a half. So pH two and a half is less than the first pKa. And remember, as we go up in pH, more hydrogens fall off. So if you lower the pH all the way, you're going to have the most hydrogens. Um, this is a hard one to interpret, but by far this one has the most hydrogens, right? So as you go up, you're going to be more negative. As you go down, you're going to be more positive. Phosphoric acid tribase, triprotic, as I meant to say, 2.14, 6.86, 12.4. We're at pH 13. So we're above the highest pH, which means we're going to have the fewest hydrogens, the most negative charge. So. This one's a little bit more, I don't know, students, a lot of students got this right. A lot of students just had trouble understanding what was going on here. So an amine group um, probably could have been more explicit about it, but, you know, it goes from an NH2. Um, plus to an NH2, right? So we're going to lose hydrogens as we go up, um, right? And become more negative. So, so the pH is more than two units below. So because it's more than two units below, we're on this side. This would be the pKa cutoff here, All right? Okay, so then now I can use that information to answer. It's going to have three hydrogens and it's going to have a positive charge. All right, now we have a carboxyl group, COO minus. Okay, so remember it's going to be COOH and then it's going to transition to COO minus. So, so anything, if the pH is below the pKa, you're on the COOH. If it's above, it's a COO minus. We are above the pKa, which means we are here. Um, and therefore we have no hydrogens and a negative charge because there's no hydrogens here and it's a negative charge. All right, this one really got students. All right, so I, in the text, I say, which one of the following graphs best represents the titration curve when drops of acid, so acid, 
are added to a solution containing a buffer. The y-axis is drops of acid and the y-axis is the pH. Okay, so as we add acid, what happens? Well, the pH is gonna go down, right? Okay, so that one is, this is not the answer. I can't get them all on the screen at once. So here the pH is going down. Okay, so we got that. pH is going down. Um, this is acid pH. So what is happening here? So it's starting off slow and then it goes down really fast and then it starts off slow again. Is that what happens with a buffer? That one goes up, so that's not good. How about this one? Let's take a look at this one. All right, so it starts fast and then it slows down and then it goes fast again. Is that what happens with a buffer? Yes, that's that's your buffer curve right there. So. All right, so again, this is a little more challenging. Match the amino acid structures with their names. The more you know, the easier this is. Histidine, uh, that's tyrosine. You know, it does help to maybe shrink it down too if these things are too big, but then of course you can't see the words. I know it's not ideal. Um, and then that is regular phenylalanine, which I didn't look to see which one is A. And then that one, final one is tryptophan, the biggest. Okay. No, each one will be used once. Um, all right. You know, they, they might be a little bit challenging on the smaller ones. Here's the amino. Here's the acid. So here's the side chain. You know, maybe um, if I shrink this down some more, I can do that for all of them at the same time. Let's just mark the side chain, side chain, side chain, side chain. We'll get to that. That's the side chain. Um, all right. So this first one is threonine because it contains uh, the smaller end. This one is tryptophan. I think I, this one includes all the ones that start with the letter T. So uh, this one is tyrosine. And then the last one better be serine. Oops, uh, tyrosine is C, and then the last one, serine, is B. Make sure I didn't use any letters twice. D, A, C, B. Good. All right, so another one. All right, uh, so this one, let's scroll up here so we can see them all. And mark off the side chain. Side chain, this one has no side chain. Side chain. Um, so this one's alanine because it just has a methyl. This one's glycine because it has no side chain. Uh, this one is um, serine because it's uh, methyl OH. And the last one, it better be threonine. Yeah, let's get the extra. Sorry, I forgot the letter. Threonine B. So let's double check. I haven't used any letters twice. D, C, A, B. Good. All right. Ah, oh, one more. All right. We need to re you really need to know your amino acid. Uh, all right. So... Let's mark them off. Side chain, side chain, side chain, and to the first three. Okay, so this one has a sulfur in it, but the sulfur is not available to do chemistry. That one is methionine. Three nitrogens um, in a star pattern. That is arginine. Um, this is a amine substituted carboxyl. It's a little bit longer, so I'm going to call this one glutamine, which better mean my bottom one better be. Oh no, the last one is tyrosine. So it's gonna be a big uh, big one. Yep. So tyrosine as well. So right. A B S A C D B. My phone keeps buzzing in this. All right. Ooh. All right. We have one of these three dimensional ones. Okay, so where is the H? It's coming out of the view. That means our corn better be clockwise. Okay, so C O R N C O N R. So this one's Connor and this one's corn. So it is image B. Which one of the following is the naturally occurring uh, amino acid? Remember that slide is the L's. What is the single? letter code for asparagine um so d e um 
N Q asparagine. So I tell people that that's a hard one for me. Tyrosine, that's the Y. I could change this. All right. So the first one they picked lipid it is a lipid. This is a steroid. Uh, I think that that one is cholesterol. Um, this again, nucleic acid. They got the same one, benzene. Uh, buffer solution is full points. Which one of the pH values is solution is an effective buffer? Oh yeah, the the I didn't get that one. These are kind of the general questions, but you know, you, it only is effective buffer plus or minus one of the buffer, which is on one of the slides there. So anything between three point seven and five point seven, so five falls in that. So again, the uh, pH five point five. We're in between these two here, so it won't be the neutral. It won't be the minus one. It'll be the minus two, which is less than the minus three. Um, same thing going on here, pH four, we're in the first two. So it's not the neutral, it's the minus one, it's not the minus two, it's not the minus three. So three hydrogens, positive charge, no hydrogens, negative charge. So again, the titration curve, this one's for added base. So the pH is going to go up and you can see the student selected, it goes slow, then it goes fast in the buffering region and then it goes slow again. But the actual reason is it goes fast, it goes slow, it goes fast. Um, we had a couple of those curves in class. It looks like they got all the identified all the amino acids correctly. It's a lot easier as a team, I'm sure. Um, all right, so here's another one I'll go through. Uh, so now that H, oops, H is going into the page, which means my corn needs to go counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. That's the right one. Um, so this is our R here. So C O R N, that's wrong, but it looks like a C -O, we're going counterclockwise. Or sorry, we're going counterclockwise, right? So C O R N. Sorry about that. I can't keep my direction straight. All right, and then we have Oh, sorry, they chose the right one, right? The wrong answer is not on the screen. Yeah, so they chose C O R N. So C O R N. Okay, so a little update on what's going on here. So you can see the picture here. Uh, what I did is, you know, I have a, I'm going to uh, stop share here. I have a, a model here. I don't know, the blue is going to get taken away of an amino acid. Here is my C alpha carbon. Okay. Um, you can't see it, but there's uh, the R group is here. So if I hold it from the carbon, the hydrogen that's connected to the C alpha, uh, then I can rotate this. So um, C O R N. So so for me, it's uh, going clockwise. For you, it's counterclockwise because I get, you're looking at the other side. But if I hold it on your your end, ooh, sorry, C O R N. Okay. Uh, just to make it a little bit simpler. I just kind of like simplified the. The whole thing. So here's my my C alpha in the middle, hydrogen, uh, blue for the nitrogen, red for the oxygen, yellow for the uh, R group. Okay. So I want to orient um, this model. So again, uh, I'm just going to hold it for your sake here. So the the uh, hydrogen is going towards you. Uh, the CO is up, uh, and then the R and the N all coordinate. So that is the correct one. Uh, in this case here, the hydrogen is going towards you. Um, it's like, sorry, like this. Uh, the CO, R, N, clockwise. All right. Next one, just to double check. All right, so now the hydrogen is kind of going away from you. The um, R is up in the air. So CO, R, N, I went counterclockwise. But that is the correct one, right? Because the, the I can't. There's no way I can rotate this model to be the other one. All right, let's go back to the quiz um, and zoom in just ever so slightly. Oops. Uh, all right. So it's hard to tell on this one, but the H is going into the screen, um, and then the uh, the R group, which is the CH three, is off to the side. So C-O-R-N, this is not, I don't think that, one, oh gosh, 
I had this all ready to go before I recorded. Um, so if, anyway, if I do it for myself here, so I put the R there. C-O-R-N. I can see that the students one is correct, which I just, I guess I hold like this for, for everyone else. Uh, but the one I have, uh, if I put the H going away from me and the R going towards me, then the, the nitrogen is up top, which is opposite of what I'm seeing. So I guess it's like, like that for you. Which it works because I guess that's the mirroring of the video on Zoom. So um, anyway, uh, so anyway, this one uh, I had wrong. So I will be updating it. This one I have right. But now I'm going to double check things. So I had a couple of these wrong and I update scores accordingly. So single letter codes, Q, Y, M, G. And then I uh, always ask him questions on whether or not it's frustrating or um, had enough time. A lot of students said there wasn't enough time. So, all right, that is it for my review. Uh, any other questions come up, feel free to contact me.